So today's been a pretty busy day here at T-Rex and there are a number of announcements that I will be making in this video. Possibly also some leaks. I know that's making the customer service department jump because they're watching this video to keep up with the things that we talk about and this looks really ugly and I'm gonna move it. Um, so yeah, we'll, uh, we'll dive into that and see. But I wanna go over some of the development and the why behind the T-Rex Arms Ready Rig. So this is our first chest rig that we are producing uh, in-house that I've been working on for the past three years. Um, the reason this design kind of came up is I was doing a lot of shooting th three, five, six years ago, and I was starting to get more into kit. I mean, I was doing kit to begin with, and in using different chest rigs, I was really not liking chest rigs in general. Uh, the problem with ma the majority of chest rigs, in my opinion, uh, they do serve a purpose in some areas, is they put all the weight in the front of the body. So for a couple examples, if you all were watching our Instagram, you saw a widespread of chest rigs dating back from 1918 all the way up to 2010s and then 2020 being our rig. So this is a Russian recon rig. Uh, it has an X harness, a single strap to secure the rig in the back. And then it holds, uh, these are all, I wanna say these are uh, triple uh, rifle mag pouches. So you can have nine rifle mags in the front, 7.62, or no, four, yeah, four, uh, 7.62 or 5.45 magazines in the front. Uh, and then you have grenades and other pouches for radios and whatnot on the sides. Now the problem with this rig, if you're looking at it right now, is it puts all this weight in the front of your body. Uh, so even with like American rigs, this, this is an Eagle Industries MPCR, if I'm saying that right, uh, you have all this weight, all this stuff in the front of your body and you rely on this little strap, this three quarter webbing to secure all the weight to your body. Now the problem with this, in my opinion, and from my own use, when you're running and gunning and you're running around, you're doing stuff, the entire rig is jumping and it's moving all around. It fatigues you faster, it's less comfortable, the gear's moving around with you. I go to shoot around a car or underneath the car, the whole thing sloshes to one side. Now when I go to index my magazine, oh, it's way over here instead of center or up high where I actually want it. Uh, so in using those rigs, I was like, you know what? I need something new. I need something that's more stable, doesn't move around, is a lower profile. I can possibly conceal it under a shirt. Now at the time, three years ago, the concealment factor wasn't a big priority to me, uh, but now as we've moved forward into 2020, we've seen the state of the nation, different things that have been going on. Uh, concealment is a pretty big deal in my opinion for the average citizen. Uh, we're not doing direct action raids in Afghanistan. We're not doing crazy hostage rescue like hits, um, but there are instances and we've seen them where Citizens in certain cities have been told by law enforcement, we're not responding to certain things. We're not helping you, you're on your own. Uh, or you know, people just going out and defending their businesses. And having rigs that are low profile that you can wear under a jacket or with a jacket covering the majority of the rig, maybe just exposing the front, uh, color matched to your clothing. That's why I really like gray because most of the clothing that we wear, whether it's flannel shirts, you know, flannel daddy, or if we're wearing our you know, cool Arc'teryx jackets and blacks and grays, uh, we're not wearing a lot of you know, camo necessarily out in public, we're wearing gray tones. So this is, in my opinion, the most effective color for the average citizen doing urban type stuff. And so this year people have seen a need for having body armor, chest rigs, low vis stuff to complement their pistol that they wear concealed and maybe a rifle that's in the car. So that's sort of the emphasis behind this rig being low vis is sort of manifested more this year. Uh, but the benefit of this rig over chest rigs out there, because again, we only design a product when we can make something unique, uh, make something better or fill a void. Now it's possible that void could just be inventory. You know, people can't get plate carriers. so. You go and make a plate carrier. There's nothing new about the AC-1 except for like the cummerbund, really. It's a plate carrier, holds plates to you. Um, but the thing that makes this rig different than all the other ones out there right now, and I'm saying that because I just never found a chest rig that didn't rely on that stupid little one inch strap, in my opinion, um, is this entire rig has an elastic cummerbund so that it's pulled tight to your body. It's not relying on this little dainty strap that moves around and I can space my gear all the way to the back. Like I can have kit all the way to here. It's still accessible, but I'm not relying on everything in the front that's gonna sag and tip forward and be unbalanced, fatigue me faster. Now the benefit of chest rigs like these or, or the, the way you wear these, in my opinion, that makes them the most uh, capable is you combine them with a backpack. Uh, Haley did that with his uh, D3XR, whatever you want to call it, uh, where you can clip in your your uh, your pack. I have some packs from Haley. I don't have any of his chest rigs because they're like $300 and impossible to get. Um, but you can like, 
add his backpack to the rig and that kind of offsets some of the weight because his rig is more focused on the front as far as weight and load bearing gear. Uh, so that, that works out better. Uh, but again, you're still relying on those little one inch straps and it's just not that stable in my opinion. Now, the downside and the pro to the one inch strap style uh, is it's not as hot. Uh, the downside to this rig right here being elastic, as some of you guys know using plate carriers that are elastic, is it's a little bit hotter. There's more stuff that's touching your body at all times. Uh, but I'm willing to sacrifice that for stability and my rig never moving and just not running around with me. So this setup right here, this is my uh, one of my primary rigs. I have a few because, you know, marketing and my job. But um, I've got my three rifle mags in the front. Uh, the way these are built is the three cells that are hard sewn into the front of the rig are sewn around the magazine that the rig is built around. Uh, and we are going to have other versions of this rig. This is the 5.56 ready rig. There will be a 7.62 ready rig. There'll be a sub gun ready rig. We've already made those. We've already tested them. I've already been using them. They're great. Uh, the cells are just spaced differently. Um, but I have my three Stanag magazine pouch, uh, you know, set up in the front. And then just like the AC-1, each side of the rig itself, I'll open this one up so you can see it. I'm sitting down. It's kind of weird and awkward, but whatever. It's kind of comfortable though. I've been sitting all day in meetings, but so the, cell, the, the cummerbund on each side, because this is an elastic cummerbund with straps on it, is essentially what it is. Uh, people are making fun of me for designing this because they're like, it's a, it's a plate carrier with straps, but no plates. Yeah, yes, uh, nobody ever did it. I don't know why not. So we did it first, but whatever. So, uh, and it's a great design. I love it. It's my favorite chest rig. Um, so the cummerbund on each side of this particular setup, the 556 ready, uh, ready rig, has a multi-tool pistol size cell, just like on the AC-1, 556 style cell uh, here in the middle, and then a larger GP size cell that will fit our ITRK just fine and other accessories and other things that you want. Uh, the other cell is mirrored. So on this side, it is just the same. Now, uh, we're gonna get to some questions, don't worry, because I know you guys are wondering probably all sorts of different things. Uh, people, some people are upset that this uh, wasn't a placard style chest rig. Uh, it's not compatible with plate carriers. And the answer is, you're right. It's not. Because those rigs, in my opinion, are not as good when they're used as a chest rig with a whole like strap system. I wanted a rig that was dedicated, like the older chest rigs, like back in the day, that was ready to go out of the box. Like you pull this out of the bag, we ship it in a little bag, but in a box. And all you have to do is adjust the harness and the back. And the back adjusts very easily. You open this flap up. I'll show you an old prototype because like we've changed a lot. You open the flap up like this. You move the cummerbund, just like on a plate carrier, to where you need it. You shut it, and now you size it for yourself. Now the only downside is there's hook on this side, loop on this side, but it hasn't been a problem for us. So you quickly size it to your body. You size the X harness and you're done. All the pouches are already ready to go. You can add your own ID, blood type, known drug allergies, morale patches, stupid patches, slaps, weird limited drop stuff from companies that really don't provide much outside of weird swag, but whatever. So you add all that to the front and you're ready. This, this is it out of the box. You don't need all these crazy accessories. Uh, so there are one thing to go over on the rig. We went with an X style uh, harness design. Those of you that have run chest rigs know the difference between X and H. The reason we didn't do an H harness uh, like on this Eagle is it is much harder to size a harness that's H style uh, to a wider variety of people. So like my problem, I'm smaller, I'm skinnier. Uh, when I hike this rig up to be, you know, where I want to wear it, so higher on my body, the H ends up being like way down here down the small of my back, and so then the straps can fall from my shoulders. And most of these chest rigs don't have adjustable H harnesses. It's a big problem in my opinion. Um, but an X harness is nice because the X kind of goes up, meets at the top of your neck, and then the straps are tight around your shoulders, so you're not going to have any of that happening with your rifle sling, stuff like that. So we went with an X style harness, um, which I, I prefer for a lot of reasons. It can get sized to more people more easily, and yeah. That's the rig. Um, it's, it's affordable, made in America. We make it right here. We, one of the big things, we've been keeping it a secret for as long as we can, but uh, we stood up our own nylon cell this year in 2020 to create items, um, various nylon products. Uh, we have an R&D cell. You guys have met Derek. You've seen him on the sling video, uh, the chest rig video, and the AC-1 video. He's our nylon development guy, uh, former sniper. He came in, great to work with. He goes to the range, shoots with us. Y'all have seen him there. Uh, super smart guy. I talked to him. I'm like, hey, I got a problem with this thing. I need this. And he's like, okay. Goes away. The next day he comes in, 
has a solution for it and he sews, he knows all the stuff, knows materials, what kind of materials are good, does a lot of research. I mean, I'll get texts from him at midnight. Uh, I'll mention gun stuff too. I'll be like, hey, I want to add this thing to my AK. At midnight, I get like, oh, I found this thing for the AK. So he's doing like gun research too on top of kit research as well. Um, so he's working on new designs, new products. We have, he and I have products, nylon products slated to 2022. Uh, we know we can't do them all next year. Uh, we've only been able to launch a few this year. Granted, these are the big ones. Like these are the foundations of the nylon offerings we're gonna be offering at T-Rex Arms. When we have a plate carrier and a chest rig. Like, a lot of companies base their entire business around those two types of products. Um, and we do other things too, but. So he and I are developing new products for these, new things. We go out and test them, we give them out. Uh, these are already overseas. I've handed these out to ODAs. I've handed these out to some folks who are protecting uh, an individual that you all see here and there on the internet. Um, so these are already in use. The guys that have used them love them. Um, they have chest rigs from other companies. They, those serve a role. They carry you know, more equipment if they need that. Uh, but for a lot of these guys, they want low vis. They want something that's more stable, hugs tighter to the body. It's not putting everything in the front. It's like sagging constantly. Uh, so those guys that have used these and have them and I have a couple guys have been using these for a year and a half now. Um, absolutely love these rigs. Now, that's a bunch of hearsay to you guys. A lot of this comes down to you using it and you deciding if you like it. Um, I'm obviously biased to this product because I designed it. Um, and then I've been working on it for three years. This is the only chest rig that I use. I mean, you'll see me, I'll run around with this guy for fun. I'll run around with a whole Alice kit for fun. I'll run around with Russian stuff. Um, I'm getting an SAS, an old SAS rig. A dude messaged me on Instagram. He's gonna send one over. I'll run around with that in some videos, cool. But if I'm going on a trip, this goes in my duffel bag. Uh, this has all my kit that I need and it goes like right into my clothes bag. I've got my extra mags, I got my radio, I got my medical, uh, flashlights, batteries. Uh, this little setup right here, I've got a waterproof notebook, a strobe, a compass, tape, and a big American flag if I don't already have one on my rig. So this little guy right here slots into my GP uh, size pouch on this side. I've got my ITRK here, and this is a nice little bundle that just goes into my clothes bag and I'm set. Or I take this nice little bundle and I put it in a small backpack, which most of these larger chest rigs you can't do that with. They just won't fit into a small little pack. Now, let's answer a few questions before I get into the first prototype, because I do want to show that to you guys. So I got my thing here. Does it accept Kiwi inserts, uh, Kydex inserts? The answer is no, it does not. We did not sew a Velcro loop on the inside that would interfere with indexing magazines. Um, it would not, not be super effective. Where a rig would work with uh, Kydex inserts would be a rig that you, kind of like a, a Spiritus Micro, where you actually put in elastic or you put in Kydex. Like you choose which you want. Uh, the problem with a setup like that is there's more material, there's more cost. It's not set up most likely out of the box. Um, and it has to be bigger. This, we didn't want, we wanted this rig to be ready out of the box, and that's what this is. You don't need Kydex inserts. You don't need crazy pouches to put on it. Uh, you don't need all sorts of wild stuff. You don't even need tourniquet carriers. I use tourniquet carriers on the inside, but you can actually run a tourniquet right in the pistol pouch here on the front. So you can technically grab this and fill it up and not buy any other accessories at all and have it ready to go. Now, I like layering extra tourniquets on it, because why not? And there are some other accessories that we are, we are working on, other versions of this rig as well. Oh wow, there's a lot of people in here. Black, all right, so that's the big question. Black for law enforcement. Here's the funny part. We've made black ones. They look too much like a bomb vest, like a lot like a bomb vest. So we're not that interested in making black. Now I understand if you law enforcement guys, you really want black, but I would also assume you don't want it to look like you're running around with a bomb vest. So. We're probably not doing black. We've talked about doing a limited run, potentially. I don't like doing the whole limited run drop thing. I don't like it, but uh, it's good marketing for certain things, certain targets, uh, but I'm not a big fan of it. Uh, doing black for like submachine gun rigs. Uh, so kind of traditional diehard MP5, you know, thing where you got six mags in the front. Um, I don't know. I just, we're trying to stay away from black because it just looks too terroristy. Uh, it looks too bomb vesty. Um, not a big fan of that. That's not... <laughs> That's not why we're designing this rig. We're designing this rig for uh, people who are trying to preserve life, who are trying to be the good guys, and there's all sorts of connotations and uh, cultural stuff. You know, part of the reason why I don't have an AK as my truck gun, because the general public, if they see an AK come out of a car and they see someone with an AK, they think bad guy. Thanks to Hollywood, video games, culture, the news, 
Kalashnikovs are seen as the bad guy gun in American culture. Now, in Russian culture, obviously, that's not the case, Middle East and whatnot, but in American culture, Kalashnikovs are seen as bad guy guns. Black gear, chest rigs, look like bomb vests. Uh, that's why we're doing gray. That's why we're doing green like this right here. It's a little more law enforcement-y, a little more civilian, and a little more concealable. You won't notice it. So anyway, that's why. Um, but people, they want that color. So um, can we see the black prototype? I don't have it here with me. It's a submachine gun rig. Uh, I run my MP5 stuff with it. I don't have it here. Someone's going to get it. I don't know. Multicam black, problem solved. Uh, getting multicam black elastic is very difficult. Um, that's another issue ran into. So as you guys remember, we were leaking this product back in February for our winter shoot. Now that was a different version. That was the advanced version, but eh, we won't talk about that right now. Um, but it's more or less the same concept. It's the same style of setup. Um, I got the go ahead in June, July. Things were looking good back here. You know, with material, production, we were, we were cranking away, we were making them, we were sewing them up. Uh, then we had some major material issues. Uh, we had uh, a major issue with a certain color. I won't say what color. And we had to actually send it back. We had to start calling companies like, is this normal that there's not, you know, resin in the elastic? And it was a, a big thing, big delays, uh, lots of problems. This, this department, this first year has been very difficult. And I can see why starting a nylon company, you know, could be very difficult. Uh, I ran into some of the same stuff with Kydex, a little less. I mean, it is COVID. Starting a business during COVID, uh, very difficult. Uh, nylon materials, because there's certain manufacturing that's getting devoted to PPE, so masks and gowns and stuff like that, so they're not like weaving elastic and other materials, has affected companies, uh, larger companies too, like, um, I don't know, I'm sure some of the big names are getting affected too. I won't say for sure because I haven't heard from them, but I'm quite sure the larger companies have been affected as well. Because we talked to these mills and these companies and they're like, yeah, that's five months out. And the quantity we're ordering at and other companies are ordering at the same quantity, maybe a little more, they're gonna have the exact same issue, if not longer uh, lead times on some of this material. So that's part of the reason why it's been very difficult. But with that said, we're still cranking out a good amount. Uh, we've got some other processes that we're developing so that we can have more stock in a few months. Um, we could have waited on launch and waited for more inventory, but I kind of explained this with the AC1 launch. There's no winning solution. Like the, and, and it's just how it is. With the amount of market share and marketing and, and platform and demand that there is right now, I would say it would be impossible for us to launch enough chest rigs or plate carriers to satisfy the demand of just people needing that product on top of the demand of the new new which people are like, oh, it's T-Rex Arms, new plate carrier, I want that, because it's theirs, which is not necessarily a good reason to want a product, but I understand why, and I, it's nice. But I think it would be almost impossible. We would need like, I don't give numbers, we would need tens of thousands of these to stay in stock longer than a few days. Like, we would need a lot. So the answer is, do we wait like a year to have that kind of stock to launch? No, we're gonna start pushing out stock as we can, so at least some of you can get equipped before, uh, potential things occur. Hopefully not, but you never know. So this is an early prototype, black, uh, for uh, MP5 mags. So this one has actually only got four in the front. I want to expand it to five, but I can run one more here, uh, one more here in the side, so six total. Um, but yeah, black, and once you have it on, it's a little, it's a little bomb-esque. So yeah, but we will do a subgun one at some point. That was Drew's fault, CS, y'all can know, Drew gave it to me. All right. So it's his fault, blame him. So, uh, let's see, zipper pouch. Don't know, uh, again, it's a product that we're testing, we're playing with. Uh, we are having it, getting it, figuring out manufacturing on that product. It is something that is being worked on. I do not have a launch date for that product. The shingle though, uh, for the AC1, that will be pretty soon. Uh, restocks on the plate carrier, very soon. Uh, restocks on this, here and there, soon. Um, it's, but we're, we're trying to punch out as much as we can to you guys. I don't anticipate us having stock where like you, uh, in the back of your head, you can just be like, oh, I'm just gonna go to T-Rex and buy one because they're always in stock. I don't see that happening until halfway through next year, unless things really kick off. Now, if things really kick off, it could be a couple years until we're able to have stock level to satisfy everyone and already have satisfied like the demand across the board for people wanting this stuff. Um, it's just the way things are. That's just how it is. 
Um, but we're trying as hard as we can to get more material, more people, more machines, more stuff, and crank stuff out. Inventory is priority. Uh, what about Coyote? Uh, we are uh, going to have Coyote, yes. Now, originally, I wasn't planning on doing it. Uh, a number of people in the company wanted it, so yes, Coyote's coming uh, actually fairly soon, so it is what it is. Stop worrying about the bomb vest thing. It's stupid. Well, if you want a black one, nothing stops you from starting your own company and making one. I'm just saying. So, uh, when do you anticipate the next version slash upgrade? The 7.62 version should be fairly soon. Uh, within the next couple months, early 21, uh, we should have a 7.62 version. It could be February, it could be March. Uh, it won't be a lot of them um, because I don't know what the percentages are. Probably like 80%, 20%, 80%, 556, 5, 20%, 762. Uh, those of you wondering, they do fit 545 mags. They will not fit 762 by 39. Um, so that's going to depend on some things. But we are going to do 762 because I love this as a little DMR rig for my FALs, my G3s. Um, my scars, like this is my rig for when I shoot my longer guns. I don't put on a plate carrier really. I put this on, I can run five 7.62 mags if I want, two on the side, three in the front, um, and I run that with my scars. Uh, generally my scars, uh, the times I was running my FAL this year, I threw it on because like, why not? I've got this rig with everything on it. I can have one of these dedicated to each gun, you know, with mags already in it, stuff already in it, set up. I can throw it to someone if they need a way to carry ammo. It's great. Hawaiian multicam. Ha <laughs> ha. Never. <laughs> so, could just buy one and paint it black. You could, uh, but I know that's not preferable to people. Like, I get it. I do spray paint a lot of gear, but I don't assume everyone's spray painting gear like I am. Uh, why no placard support? Because... So we have a placard supported, so we have a version uh, that does it. Originally, that's what I was designing. But in designing the rig, well, hang on, Charles, I won't show this quite yet. Um, in designing the rig, I realized the whole placard support thing and buckles sewn in, hard sewn in or other material was creating a rig that was not, it fills a mission in some ways, in some areas, but it was not as concealable as one that's dedicated. Like this is a dedicated chest rig. This is not a dedicated hybrid placard, switchable, mission configurable chest rig, deluxe, dynamic setup. That's not what this is. If you want that, there's a lot of companies out there that make cool chassis and systems that you can layer whatever pouches you want. Now you're gonna be stuck with a single strap around the back because that's like what all of them are, unless you go old jungle style and do the full like, uh, I just got one from, I think it was Eagle, where it's full like molly around the entire body and it's giant. Um, that's not what this is. Uh, if you want that, you can get it from someone else. Now, are we planning a version that takes placards and other accessories? Yes, uh, but that's not happening anytime soon. Not for a while. But I will show you guys the first prototype, because originally I was designing this rig. Remember, it wasn't so much about concealment. It was more about uh, just keeping stuff tighter to the body. So my original prototype, this is not the original original, but this one is pretty old, a couple years old. Um, I actually did have uh, buckle hookups in the front. Uh, same thing, elastic cummerbund. The rear was actually mesh. Uh, I didn't have an easy way to adjust the rear. We had different little, uh, this was actually a different piece. It was sort of like velocity system style. This back piece, basically you would receive three different sizes and you would add those sizes based on how skinny or large or fat you are. Um, sorry, I just threw that out there. Social justice warriors, uh, don't at me. Um, so the other issue with the rig was, uh, or not issue, I hadn't figured out the cells I knew I wanted pistol, uh, and then the other two were 5.56. Five, I didn't get into like a bigger one for the med kit because this didn't even exist then. Uh, you know, a lot's changed. Uh, but I did have placard support on this. And then later this developed a little more for the winter shoot in February. Um, but then when I started going more towards, we need a more concealable vest. We need a, a vest, a chest rig that is done out of the box. They don't have to scrounge around for different parts. They can immediately start using it. They can throw it to a family member. They can afford multiple of them, because that's another thing. Like this rig is not gonna be cheap when it comes out, um, but having a rig that you can buy multiple of, so you have one for your AK, one for your ARs, one for your 762 guns. Now you're not having to constantly change out placards and setups and whatever. You can just grab, I'll take that one, or I'll take that one. I'll throw this one to this person. I'll throw this one to this person, because frankly, we could potentially going in that, be going in that direction, right? Or maybe it comes down to that. And that's why a lot of the, my personal mission for equipment this year has changed a lot uh, than what it was in previous years. Previous years, it was more like design the Gucciest, coolest stuff that solves every problem imaginable, as many problems as possible. And now it's 
Well, uh, outfit as many people as possible with gear, uh, make it affordable, uh, make it good, and have it solve as many problems as it can for what it is. Uh, and that's what I'm trying to do right now. Uh, we do design, and we have some cool stuff that we're working on. It's just not a priority compared to this stuff that can affect more people, in my opinion. So let's go back to the questions because I know I'll, I'll, I'll move this one to the front now. I'll let you guys take a gander at this rig. Ah, it has a thing on it which isn't out yet, but whatever. I have this guy right here. Does it come in XXXXXXL? Ah, uh, no, it does not. Um, but you can head up our website. There's sizing information on exactly how long everything is, how it works, and yeah. Oh boy, um, this is a copy. I'm curious what this is a copy of. I'm really curious uh, because I have yet to see a chest rig that is in particular. Um, it's bent. Oh, it's frozen. Oh no, it's not. Never mind. Okay, well, so um, I have yet to see a chest rig that is a cummerbund. <laughs> that adjusts in the rear the way this one does and it is set up the way that this one is. Velcroing on top of itself. Like, if you can show me one, you can send one, awesome. Um, but you're right, this is a copy of a chest rig concept that has been around since 1918. Uh, actually, the most similar one would be the SKS rig of the 50s. So you're right, it's the principles. It is a copy of the principle of putting things on your body. You're right, absolutely. It's $130, made in America. Oh boy, uh, can we see you wear it? So, this entire time, I have actually been wearing, now granted, not fully kitted, but I've actually been wearing one under this jacket. So, yeah, sure, I'll, I'll, I'll kind of crouch down so you can kind of see what's going on. So, what I can do, if I'm wearing this under my jacket, is I can open it up, I can load it up with my magazines from a bag. So let's say I have my, uh, my gun bag that has my 300 blackout mags in it, because I always have my little gear bag that I go around with work, you know, go around to work with and I've got my uh, 300 blackout mags in there, my spares, so I grab my MCX or I grab my BCM. Uh, the BCM is usually the one that's like with me. Uh, and then I just take my mags out of my bag, fill it up. I can add the medical or whatever that's in the bag and I can just ride around like this. And the mags are easily accessible right out of the rig. It's set up and then if need be, and the reason I have these 20, 20 and 30, is if I have to button up because like things are getting wild, I just, uh, I just, I just button up, you know? And then I've, I've got my stuff, got my ammo. I've got 70 rounds on right now. And I can have medical under here. I can have a knife, I think I have a knife right here. No, I don't, I took it out. Uh, flashlight, knife, uh, tourniquet, mags, all under this old jacket. Now, if I go down to wearing a button shirt, something like that, it's gonna depend on how built you are, how you're wearing it, how kitted. I mean, if I were to add 40s to this, uh, a little harder to conceal, absolutely. Um, but yeah, I can run around with this. And I'm set. Big American flag for PID. You know, if I want guys to be like, yeah, look, I'm, I'm one of you. I'm a good guy. Um, or you could have your big, you know, thin blue line flag or whatever entity you want to, you know, represent. Um, but yeah, that's a, it's a big deal. It's awesome. Just like this. And this was the priority specifically for this year. It was a setup like this. So you can walk around in public or be somewhere in public, have a little more capability. It's not too over. It's not too shown. And you're set in case you need some stuff. That's the purpose. Like this is a concealment chest rig. It's not a direct action chest rig. I, I know people are, they're not gonna understand that. They're gonna be like, well, it doesn't take placards, it doesn't take this, it doesn't take that. I'm like, yeah, it's not what it's for. Like we'll have our direct action chest rig later. This is the low vis, affordable, anyone can get it out of the box, ready to go setup. That's what this is. It's, I know it's hard for people to understand there are differences in, in equipment. Uh, absolutely there are. How built slash chonky you are. I'm, well, I'm, oh, you mean in general? Well, I'm not, but I don't quite understand what you're saying. AAC1 restock, very soon. Uh, make sure you're on the wait list for the version or the thing that you want, the size you want, color you want. Um, AC1 without plates is a chest rig versus this rig. I don't recommend plate carriers without plates. Uh, the way they're sewn, set up to handle weight distribution, uh, they're not as effective, in my opinion, as something like this. So I said I wanted to build this out as a rig where if someone couldn't afford $600, so right now, what's really cool is you can get L210s, which are good plates, and our AC1 for under $600. That's pretty affordable for, you know, good plates and a good plate carrier that's not some Chinese piece of crap. So $600. Now, if you can't afford that, but you need something to complement your rifle, you need some way of carrying medical, comms, you know, water, uh, and magazines, that's what this is. 
So if you're building out a budget loadout, $1,000, you get like a PSA or I don't know, some budgety gun. I have a budgety upper inbound from a company that I never knew about. It's actually very cool. Um, from a company that makes ammo that you never would think would make rifles, but they do. Um, I'm actually really looking forward to that more than some other stuff I've gotten recently, like the Dragon Off. Um, but basically the concept is if I'm building out a loadout for $1,500, $1,000, I can throw this in and I can come in at cost. I'm not jacking the price up with some expensive Gucci setup or a full plate carrier set that's minimum 600 bucks. Like that's what this was designed for. So anyone can have a rig for carrying the necessities to go with their rifle, with their long gun. That's the purpose behind this rig. And I know people are still not gonna understand the purpose behind it. That's fine, it's okay. That's why we made it, that's what it's for. It's just how it is. Works perfect with a, yeah. Throw it into a bag with the gun, it's great. You can't really do that with a plate carrier. Like transporting plate carriers kind of sucks, uh, I'll be honest. Like you have to change your duffel bag size, go to a duffel bag like this will fit in one of our Eberly stock, if I'm saying that right, rifle bags with a folded MCX. I can fit this in there. Um, you know, I've talked to some counter terror guys who are doing the same thing over in Europe. They got their MCXs in bags, chest rigs like this, right inside. Uh, armor can't really do that. Uh, armor is adding a lot of weight. It's Minimum like 11 inches wide by like 16 inches, something like that. Uh, it's two plates stuck together. There's other accessories on top. It ends up being kind of fat. Um, it's just not as easy to fit in bags for low visibility, asymmetric warfare, irregular guerrilla warfare operations. It's not, okay? And I'm throwing in a bunch of words. In, oh, what's the word? Uh, what's the word Haley always uses? I can't remember. Non-permiscuous, no, no, that's not the right word. <laughs> Environments. <laughs> what is it? What's the word he uses? I can't remember. Not promiscuous. I mean, that's what the gun industry is generally is promiscuous. Um, you guys know what I mean. Uh, when are we getting Claymore sidecar? Uh, if you can prove you have real Claymores that you EDC, let me know. Let me know. Maybe we'll hook you up. Doubtful, but we'll let you know. Does it work together with the AC-1? The answer is it can. Old school style, it can. You can wear this on top of a plate carrier. I've worn this on top of soft armor. There's some pictures on our website showing that. Uh, Bulletproof me, 3A vest, this on top. Uh, works pretty well for that. Uh, is it as effective wearing this on top of a plate carrier? Yes and no, it works. Although now you have two independent items that can move a little bit. You have two layers of elastic, elastic from the plate carrier, elastic of the uh, chest rig itself. Uh, you have a little bit more nylon going on. Now this is already slick and our plate carrier is already slick so it's not too bad. Um, so you can do that. And then you kind of have a system where it's like, do I want to run chest rig only? Do I want to run plates only? Do I want to combine both? And that's kind of cool. That's kind of nice. Uh, you do have to resize the rig though to go on a plate carrier. You got to make it a little fatter in the back. Um, you generally do have to adjust it a little more in the straps uh, because you're trying to put it on over a bunch of plates. So there is that. <laughs> yeah, okay, I totally used the wrong word. Whatever. Wolf Upper, you got it. So I did not know that Wolf manufactured uh, these really cool uppers for $500. And guess what, they're in stock, like everywhere. T91 uppers. Uh, so I bought one at 12 and a half inch. Um, I'm gonna see how it is, but as a budget setup with a fixed front sight post, I don't believe it folds. Uh, polymer handguard, it's gonna be pretty lightweight. Comes with a bolt, charging handle. Um, $500, I can throw that on an AR pistol lower. Uh, I could be, have a decent gun. Uh, I'd probably take that over a PSA for like $800, which um, is pretty cool. Throw this in there, add a grand, I have a way to carry ammo, and I got a gun. With iron sights, add another $100, $200, got a weapon light. Um, so that's pretty cool. I have one of those inbound. It should arrive this week, and I'll play with it. Uh, pretty fun. Seems excessive. No, explosives are not, but whatever. Um, so I'm trying to check this. Any details on the advanced rig? Uh, not anytime soon. Uh, but the details will be, it takes placards. Uh, but again, if you're wanting a full direct action setup taking placards, uh, there's other ones out there. Uh, if you want a low vis chest rig, there's not as many of those out there. That's why this exists. Um, but yeah, the advanced one will take placards. Uh, we'll potentially have our own placards by then. Uh, I don't want to say much about that. Uh, and then, yeah, there's other stuff. God, now you guys are all going to ask, hey, check that out. Just, uh, da, 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 da. Just, you know, yeah, Superman, ready to go. Uh, pretty awesome. <laughs> I like it. And then, you know what? I'll, uh, let's go ahead and put one on. So I'll remove these. I won't take this one off. I'll just wear this one underneath. I'll wear two chest rigs. Talk about big 2020 flex. Two chest rigs. I've already seen people putting AC1s on eBay. It's pretty funny. 
Um, all right, so we'll take this rig. Uh, yeah, we'll take this one. I'll just wear this on top. We'll just kind of show you guys what's going on. So go tip for putting this on. Because when you first get it, it could be a little confusing. Like what's the front, what's the back? Cause you know, it's all together. I grab the two front straps like this, ta-da. And then I literally, head goes through. Gotta bust my microphone. Ah. And this is not gonna fit as, I would need to loosen a little bit cause I'm wearing it on top of a chest rig underneath. Oh, it's not bad though. Bring the cummerbund around. I'm done. Just like that. You, 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 otherwise, you got to finagle with a buckle. I'm going to do some other stuff. But this setup right here, can I, here, zoom out. I know there's no lighting here. Well, ah, shoot, this camera. But like, it's, it's, not, it's, not, it's not going anywhere. You know, and I got weight, I got radio, I got medical. Uh, this is going to be a meme, I know it. It's, but it's great. Stable, consistent, you know, go down to prone. It's, it's not all fat in front of you. It's just an awesome setup. It's just great. Why no one ever made an elastic cummerbund chest rig? I don't know. I, I honestly don't know. It's such a simple concept to do this. Now, some of the figuring out like which side opens up and which side, you know, doesn't, uh, how it attaches in the rear, how it adjusts. That was a little complicating, trying to figure out a, a, an easy way, a, a, you know, a low-vis way to do that. That was a little complicated, but... There we go, America. I have AK mags in here, you know, Russia. Uh, so anyway, uh, great for LARPing. Everything's LARPing. It's all training's LARPing. It's live action role playing, it's all, all training. <laughs> Sorry, everyone does it. Everyone LARPs until they get into the situation, and then after the situation, they go back to LARPing. That's literally what it is. Now, there's different levels of LARPing, you know, like cosplay, stuff like that, like I get it. But everything's LARPing. Everything. It doesn't matter who you are, what you're doing. If you are training in a non-scenario, like an actual thing happening to you right then, it's LARPing. That's what training is. Like, I'm sorry, but not sorry. Um, so, yeah. Dry clean only or what? Um, email the guys and ask that. I don't clean my rigs. I'll be honest. I don't like wash them. Maybe I should. Um, if you wear it against the skin, yeah, you might want to do some cleaning. Uh, email the guys. They'll get you a. They'll get you an accurate response. I'm not going to tell you what I would do because it's probably not the best idea. Because I don't clean. I don't clean my guns really, and I don't really clean my my gear. So, do they infer? The answer is no, they don't. Well, the answer is they can. So I recommend when you get one of these, you set it up high. Set it up high where the magazines don't interfere with your chin. You know, like, I, I wouldn't run it all the way up to here, but I'm not gonna wear it down by my waist. That's not what this rig is intended for. So if I am carrying appendix, yeah, I'm fine. I could still do my draw, not a problem. So yeah, I built this around, and I've been sitting here this whole time with a gun and a chest rig on underneath this jacket, and now I have another chest rig on, and I can still do all my concealment stuff. Oh shoot, I shouldn't show this gun, I'm on YouTube. Oh shoot, well it's, it's against the black thing. A jacket. I totally forgot about that. <laughs> YouTube's all picky now. So the answer is yes, you can. As I have been doing this entire time, sitting down in this chair. Huh. Um, well, it's chest rig being Cold War, Modern Warfare. Um, I mean, you never know. You never know. Uh, will you ever sell the AC1 Cummerbund separate? The answer is yes, we will. Uh, we will sell the AC1 Cummerbund separate. It will have some added features, most likely. I don't know when. Uh, Q2 next year, maybe. I don't know. Uh, do a backflip. I can't look. Oh, look. I, I appreciate you guys. Maybe think highly of me or my capabilities. I can't do backflips. All right. Like, let's get that out there. I can't do that. I and mean, maybe if I drank a little more of this. Mm. Oh, man. I'll be ready to do a backflip in 10 minutes. That's when caffeine starts to hit. All right. Millie's being stock. We will be restocking these every week, two weeks. Depends on how manufacturing is going, how things are going, quality control, stuff like that. Um, but this is not a product, unless we had a major issue, for example, uh, that's going to be like four or five months until a restock. Um, this is something we'll be able to restock more often, which is great because we're able to control the supply a little more effectively. Um, but other things can happen like COVID, election, material, stuff like that. Things are always possible. Um, but we are able to control supply a little bit more effectively. And that's very important to us. Our goal for this year was to 
really clamp down on some of our vendors, uh, get some good agreements in place on like what we need to get because we're making a promise to you guys in selling that item, uh, figure out our own manufacturing capability here, uh, figure out some other solutions in other areas just to keep inventory. Like that's literally been the goal for 2020. Like that is the big flex is inventory and shipping like same day and next day, good customer service, those as well. But inventory is like the biggest flex as a company right now in the gun industry. Not necessarily super awesome innovative products because let's face it, if I, if I go and make a super awesome cool product, uh, offset mount uh, is a decent example of this, but you can never buy it, it's not that good. The product is only as good as it is when it is available. So I could start announcing cool designs that Derek and I have back in his office, but if you can't buy them, they're really not that great. They're cool designs, but they're really not that great. So inventory and supply and manufacturing, that's it. That's, that's the play. 2021, that, and it's still going to be the play. It's going to be the play for probably two or three more years at least. But who knows? We'll see what happens. Um, I already said, plate carrier for, uh, looks like some next week. <sighs> anyway. Yeah. Um, Did you talk about super hidden covert stuff yet? As in the chest rig in general? Or wearing other things. Oh, I know. I showed. I showed it some. I'm just. I'm wearing two right now. I'm wearing two chest rigs. Oh. I'm wearing one underneath and this one. I've got all sorts of magazines. Uh, plate carrier or this. So kind of what I was going back to. If you have a firearm, you have a rifle, uh, but you don't have plates or armor. You can't afford. You're doing things slowly and incrementally. Chest rig, something like this. Get that first. Uh, especially one that's designed like this where you have the capability of going low vis or concealed a little more not as noticeable um, if you have the money and the ability to do armor then yeah go straight to armor but I think it is important right now with the way things are going that people have both options an option that is not super obvious and visible and then something a little more overt armor because armor you know defeats bullets and plate carriers hold plates to you uh, this chest rig holds ammunition to you. Um, I think people should have both. This is way cheaper to start out with, so yeah, definitely start with this if you're getting into gear. Your mic. Thank you. I think it's fixed. Um, so anyway, what happens when Biden makes guns illegal? We will see. We will see. They've talked... The Democratic Party has talked about making guns illegal for a very long time. It has yet to happen, although in some states it gets worse than others. But we'll see. We'll see what happens. Stay strapped or get clapped. Uh, why do you say we might have to pass out rigs to other people soon? What's coming? Uh, well, in simple terms, uh, if, I, if anyone has to go to a gunfight, you should want to take more people. Uh, not, not just you. Uh, it's also possible you have friends who are not as well equipped or don't have things. So if you need help, because this should be a community thing, uh, and you got some friends that show up, some guys that show up, some whatevers, um, you can get them out with some stuff. You know, like I've got friends who don't have night vision. I have some extra night vision. I would definitely help them out. Or different kit, different styles of things. Uh, what do you? That's not at all what that is. Night vision. You have friends. Oh, oh yeah. Well, you, have, like, you, have, you have night vision. I do. And I have IR strobes on my cover kit. I, I see that. And uh, I've got. Uh, I will I've got say. Some other stuff uh, in the back that I, I will say, and this is pretty cool. So uh, Isaac's wearing a gray chest rig with a gray shirt, and uh, if he was walking around in public with that, no one would see it or notice it unless they're literally like, like up close. Like he walk around downtown uh, Nashville, and probably only one person would ever actually see the setup if his shirt's open like that. Same with mine. I unzip my shirt and run, run around. Probably a couple people would notice. I may or may not have night vision in this chest rig. Probably a bunch of other stuff too. Probably like he's probably got a 3D printer in there, a little mini CNC machine, a Haas manual. Uh, I, I am, I am <laughs> carrying a level here, uh, but I can't show the holster because yeah, I don't show that. Put a prototype holster in, but well, don't do that. <laughs> pretty easy modification. Don't test part. Don't test gear. We just make gear without testing it. Everyone knows that. Look at Reddit. This is my new favorite carry, by the way. Well, good. I can I've seen you carrying it a few days. Yeah. yeah. I will say, well, it definitely has some benefits over wearing a bunch of belt stuff. That's for sure. 
Um, you guys want to buy an Islet. Funny you say that. I've had probably 10 people message me about Islets recently. I don't know what's going on. I don't know if a bunch of those are getting are falling off of trucks right now or maybe they're issuing new stuff and there's a bunch of old ones. I don't know, but I've had like 10 different people ask me about Islets. And the answer is I would love to have one, uh, but not at the price people are asking. I don't need one. I would take one for a, a good price, but I, not for what people are asking. Where it's like $6,000 and crazy stuff. Uh, yes, we are in Nash Vegas, pretty much. Um, -da -da -da. All right, so let's try to finish up here. We got, we got like 14 minutes to go, and we're good. Um, donate to Ragnarok. Uh, we don't really do that. Uh, we do charity events sometimes. We don't like we don't do giveaways, uh, marketing giveaways. We don't do that. So anyway, uh, the customers are the trial testing. Yeah, well, ask Sig. Uh, <laughs> Uh, 556 shingle drop. So soon, uh, quarter one of 2021, but I do not have an exact. We actually never have exact dates, not really. We had a decent date. We were actually supposed to launch this yesterday. It got pushed today. Um, it is what it is. Uh, what knife do you have in your chest rig? That is a flagrant beard havoc. Oh, a flagrant beard havoc. People are asking. Uh, can we get a chest rig in plaid? If you can find me plaid elastic, this stuff right here, um, maybe. Uh, the problem is Cordura, you can get Cordura patterns, like Cordura and like any pattern that there is. The problem with this rig is it is like 90% elastic. And the elastic material right now is one of the hardest materials to get your hands on. Cordura is easy. Cordura is everywhere. 500D, 1000D, you know, 330 if you can get that. It's all over the place. Elastic though, a lot harder to get. Um, lead times are nuts. Patterns are crazy. Uh, we're probably never going to make this in certain stuff because they do in other multicam patterns because they just don't make it. Or we have to do a full custom run, which is like, I don't know, 10, 20,000 yards or something like that insane, which, you know, uh, down the road we might do, but because um, I'm down for it. But this is an elastic rig. It's going to be hard to manufacture in other colors that you're normally accustomed to seeing chest rigs in. Like, for example, AOR1 elastic, uh, don't think that exists. Uh, I could be wrong about AOR1 elastic. I've never seen it. I uh, highly doubt there's four inch or five inch AOR1 elastic um, or ever. I could be wrong though. You know, solution dyed, AOR1 or whatever. Like, I highly doubt it. Actually, it'd have to be print woven or whatever it's called. How did you mount a pistol under rig in winter video? That is another product that, again, we make, we play with. We just haven't manufactured it, made it available. It's just a little piece of molly that goes down here with some stiffening material inside. Um, the new one is actually molly on both sides, so you can run it on. There's some rigs where the Velcro is on the underside. Uh, it's not on the underside. Um, so that's Ambi is the new style. And then you run a Blackhawk molly mount, which is the best in my opinion. And then you mount your QLS on top of that. So that's how I was running it. Um, but that's not out yet. Who knows when. Um, but yeah, we've been using that for about a year now. Uh, keep doing it. Awesome. Thanks, Ryan. I appreciate that. Uh, spray paint them black. Hey, if you want to do it, uh, go ahead. Send me a picture. We'll love to see it. Uh, will you make one for dogs? Uh, no. Uh, we'll not do that. Um, all right. Well, let's see. I'm still coming back. When do you think ammo is coming back? That depends on uh, the election. Uh, that depends on people's perception of whether things are getting worse or bad. Uh, if people's perception is nothing's happening, things are fine, it comes back sooner. If people's perception is things are getting worse, uh, there might be a gun ban. Yeah, nothing's coming back until some of that fear is over. As long as the fear exists, it's going to stay. Uh, if the fear goes away for some reason, uh, like whoever is president says, we ain't coming after your stuff, um, whoever it is, then yeah, the, it would probably come back six months, a year, maybe after that. But as long as there's fear that stuff could happen or disappear or you could never get it again, we'll still be paying 70 cents for 556, 60 cents for 9 mil, if not more. Um, chest rigs, plate carriers will be harder to get. Plates will be hard to get. Everything's going to be in high demand, and that's just the way things are. So, yeah, we'll see. Also, if Biden goes to war, 556 will be scarce. Oh, you mean in general, like somewhere else, not necessarily. I don't know. Anywhere. Oh, yeah. If the military buys a lot of 556, sure. it will be bought. That's true. If there's a war... That's the thing, yeah, if there's a war, whether it's here in the country or outside the country, uh, supply lines here are affected. Uh, certain manufacturers have to prioritize the government. Like, they have a duty to the government, armor companies and other stuff like that. 
Um, so if we did have a war in another country, uh, I know people argue that there's all sorts of little conflicts in right now, but like an all out war, um, that would affect supply for you guys as well uh, on ammo, kit, gear, helmets, armor, stuff like that. That definitely does happen. Um, where can I get a good AR-15 without long wait? Uh, so that's the funny part. I ordered an AR upper from a company. I won't say who. I waited six months. I only just got it. I bought it back in July. Uh, maybe that's five months. July 18th to now. Uh, is that five months, six months? I don't know. Uh, not great. Uh, you generally just have to watch for companies to restock like Aero Precision. I know they've done some restocks. You can hit them up, but it's very hard. Uh, I wouldn't buy a custom AR and be like, yay, I'll get it soon. Like, no. Uh, just wait for something to be in stock or potentially go and buy one at premium over price, like I did the 3090. Got one on eBay. Uh, let's see. Sell radios on T-Rex. Uh, that'd be a question more for Isaac, not me. But not now. You can ask him later and, or email the company and they'll answer the question as best as they can. We, we will email the customer service you. department. What? We won't answer that question until it's in stock on it, the yeah. website. Yeah. Um, uh, okay, so I'm running back down. Uh, look, what I just said about rifle companies sounds like everyone, really. Uh, I personally, we tr we try really hard not to do back orders. Uh, we try to only sell what we have on hand. Uh, and there was even some discussion earlier today, because we, we actually did restock the chess rig page uh, today, um, was uh, do we go ahead and restock some that we know we might have tomorrow, um, or do we just restock what we know we have right now? And it was like, no, we only stock what we have right now. Because uh, the stuff that we could have tomorrow or later, unless we have it, we're not going to put that out there. Because like we've been burned, and we burned you guys by doing that with products. Where it's like, we know we'll have this, we'll put it in the drop down, we'll do this, and then we don't have it. And we essentially break our promise to you guys, which is a problem. So now we only sell, as hard as we can, we only sell what we actually have on hand, on the shelves, with a SKU, with all the shipping stuff set up, so the shipping team can literally ship it same day. And believe it or not, our shipping team has been shipping chest rigs that were ordered this morning, same day. Uh, now, maybe not everyone's chest rigs going out today, uh, but there have been a number of people who've messaged me going, my tracking numbers, I already got one. Uh, it's only been a few hours since I ordered it. Pretty amazing. And for a first product launch, that's pretty awesome. Um, so that's super cool. Shipping team's absolutely killing it. Uh, can you please start offering product bundles? Um, ye, uh, yes, we would like to. Uh, product bundles, when we did them for the Orion, were very successful. Uh, we did it with Spiritus Gear back when we sold it. We took all their parts. We put them into a bag to actually be a full plate carrier. Um, we would like to do that again with certain products. The difficulty is if you have a product, I've explained this before, that relies on like seven different products, that means you have to have all seven products in stock in order to build it. And if one of those products all of a sudden becomes really hard to stock, and we've experienced this, everything else waits. And everything else can't be sold. Everything else isn't going to customers. So we have a project that we have slowly been solidifying production in different parts so that we can actually control everything involved and actually sell it as a completed unit with a bunch of stuff put together. Um, and that'll be something for next year in 2021. Um, but it's very hard to do combo products that rely on, especially if it's different manufacturers, where I'm like, I need you to like hurry up and give us your thing. I need you to hurry up and give us your thing, and we gotta hurry up and make this thing, and then this thing. Okay, now we can finally build it. Like it's it's a pain logistically, especially if you're relying on other vendors. Like it's it's horrible. Um, so the answer is when we can, we're gonna do it. But if we can't keep it in stock ever, we we're just not gonna do it. Um, would AK mags fit? Yes, AK mags. Oh, right here. Uh, 545 mags do fit. Uh, 762 by 39 do not. Uh, they're a little bit wider, a little more curvature. Uh, they end up hitting each other uh, on the rig. So you are going to want the 762 DMR version of this rig for 762 by 39 AK magazines, uh, which we will do in the near future. Like I said, early 21, uh, 2021. So we'll see. You're late. Yes, you are late. That's uh, fine. Thoughts on open carrying. Uh, a lot of responsibility goes into open carrying. Uh, there's a lot of responsibility in carrying a firearm in general. It is dangerous. I love it how people think it's not dangerous. I'm like, no, carrying a gun, whether people see it or not, is dangerous inherently in and of itself. Uh, not carrying a gun can be dangerous as well. Open carrying, I would say, is in some ways more dangerous. Um, you have to be hyper aware of people around you, behind you, what kind of holster you're using. Um, I prefer keeping it concealed. People don't see it. 
Uh, now, I'm not so freaked out if someone sees it at the gas station because I hop out of the car and it's my shirt's tucked behind or something. I'm here in Tennessee in you know, middle of nowhere. Uh, I see people open carrying out here all the time. I'm not worried about that. I'm not going to get fired at my job either, <laughs> obviously, uh, if I'm unconcealed or running around with a battle belt and a rifle. I'll walk around here with an AR like all the time. Um, so I know in some places you have to be a little more concerned, but I don't recommend open carry unless you really know what's going on with it and you're willing to take the increased responsibility of open carrying. Um, and you should have active retention. Uh, as much as I would love to recommend a Ragnarok for open carry, uh, I would not. Uh, I would use a Safari Land or other level two holster. Um, now, if you have a group of friends, so you have a team, because I know teams that run Ragnaroks because they're in a, in a team element, so they don't have to worry as much about a dude coming up behind one of them and grabbing it because there's like more eyes you know, available um, and they're keeping people away or whatever. That's a different story. But if you're on your own, yeah, have level two of some sort. Probably not a Serpa. Um, probably not that one because it's really easy to defeat. Um, people say you also can shoot yourself with it. Not really. If you do that, it's your finger going in the trigger, uh, not the holster. Um, but yeah, you, you should have a level two holsters, Fireland, ALS, something like that. Oh boy. Oh, questions, questions. Um, XSC, that's Surefire. Oh, it's interesting. Let's see. All right, I'm, com I'm coming down. I'm reading more questions because I know you guys like questions. <laughs> Restock now. <laughs> it has to be at this moment. I'm, I, I wish it could. Like, that's the funny thing. People, people assume that I, uh, or that we or companies in general don't like stocking product. Uh, no, I love it because uh, money and capitalism. The fact of the matter is sometimes there are constraints in manufacturing or materials or quality control or problems or manpower or whatever that we can't do it. I can't make 10,000 chest rigs tomorrow. I, I can't. I, I wish I could. I really do because capitalism, I love it. Uh, but I can't make 10,000 chest rigs tomorrow. It's not going to happen. Um, now, we are constantly expanding. I mean, this is a whole new department, a whole new thing that we stood up this year. Uh, it's going to get way bigger next year. Um, we did not have any of this back in 2019. So there's been a lot of work going on. But no, I can't snap my fingers and, you know, Thanos things into existence. It's not going to happen. Or the opposite. So, um, the 556 shingle is not out yet. Uh, not out, but soon, soon. Um, we are not planning on carrying products that we cannot keep stocked. We are trying to avoid that as much as we can. Uh, we have dropped a number of vendors in the past and we will continue to do so. Um, if, we, if they cannot supply product to us when we're promising to customers that we do sell their product. Because uh, that's what having a product listing on our page says. So if a company cannot keep up with our demand because of our market share and like the amount of people hitting our site a day, uh, we, we just can't sell their stuff. Even if we like their stuff, we can't sell their stuff. Um, and that goes for a lot of vendors out there on certain products. We just can't. Now, if it's a vendor that makes a product and nobody else makes a product like it, it's kind of hard to get. It's our favorite. There might be an exception there. Uh, but even then, there's some people that might get canned this year, this coming year, 2021. If they can't keep up and it's always in stock, you know, months and months out of stock, we may just pull it from the site and we just can't sell it. And that's a big deal to us. It's becoming a bigger deal to us. Uh, we let a lot of things kind of slip under the rug. We swept things under the rug back in 2018. Um, we started like the whole phase two thing. And then 2019 with some stuff we couldn't keep stocked. Um, but we're having to like get a little more, um, have a little more standards in that area. So, yeah. Uh, I'm curious why people buy them right away. Shouldn't they be reviewing them and learning more? So one reason is a lot of people trust our brand. Uh, because we've produced a number of products out there to a high level. Um, a lot of people buying the chest rig from us or the plate carrier are holster users. They've seen our quality and our manufacturing uh, and our customer service, our warranty. They've seen all that stuff on our holster stuff. And so they know we're going to have that on the nylon stuff. And it's true. We do. Most Give a, likely. Most likely. If we, yeah. Sure. Now, if you do something stupid and take scissors to this and then want another one, like, sorry, it's not going to happen. But generally speaking, when people have a brand that they trust, they don't necessarily wait for a review, uh, especially if it's an affordable product like this. This is $130. You could sell this on eBay after a week if you didn't like it. Like you, you could sell this on eBay, not a problem. I'm sure there'll be some going up there for uh, 200. I, there's a guy on eBay right now trying to sell an AC1 for 500. 
or 500 bid, 700 buy it now. Uh, very funny, don't buy that one, that's way too expensive. Unless you wanna pay the premium and have one, then fine. Uh, just, it's stupid, but whatever. Um, so you could go ahead and sell it. You could get it, use it for a week, look at it, and then sell it, not a problem. You can do that with the sidecars, put them on eBay. Like T-Rex's name, and this is a benefit to customers, is widely enough known that it's easier for our gear to resell because uh, people recognize the name and they know what's behind the name. And now a new company, a new startup, especially us when we were only a year too old, not the case. Uh, people aren't Googling T-Rex arms on eBay. People are not, are not well, just searching T-Rex arms on eBay. They're not Googling T-Rex arms in Google. Uh, but now seven years in, we create a lot of different products. We're known for customer service. Now we're known for our shipping speeds. Uh, when the stuff's in stock and you add it to the cart and you check out and then pretty soon you get a tracking notification. Um, those are all things that go into trust into new products that we manufacture. Uh, but we have to take that seriously because if this is a dud product uh, right after launch, that affects our reputation on everything else that we do. Our holsters, our uh, rifle components, our other nylon or whatevers. So there's just there's a lot at stake obviously with the brand, with loyalty, with trust, um, with credibility, but that's one reason why people buy this stuff right off the bat, or they buy from other companies they like. They've experienced good service before, they want that good service again, and they trust they'll get it. That's why. But with all that said, I know there's a bunch of you in here. Um, for those of you that showed up late, we already talked about and showed the rig in general and what it does and how cool it is and how much stuff you can put in it, how tight it is to the body, how it doesn't move when you do weird Fortnite dances. Just kidding, don't do that. Um, so if you want to get that information, you can watch through this video again. If you want to get more information in detail with more camera angles and cool stuff, uh, thanks to Charles and Chad, uh, our video guys, you can head over to the, the Ready Rig product page on our website and you can actually get you know, the down and dirty into the rig, how it works, uh, see some of the history of chest rigs and, and my video I did, why we designed it the way that we did, and you can kind of see what's going on with that. And if you have any questions, you can email the customer service team at team at trex-arms.com. And I would highly advise that you subscribe to the newsletter because this morning at 8.22 Central, we sent out the waitlist uh, notification to everyone on this product back when we had a product page up. It was sort of an experiment. Uh, and our newsletter waitlist. All those people got notified on this setup and the product page was hidden. It was not available or visible to the grand public. It was only available to the newsletter people until like three o'clock. So for quite a while, everyone in the newsletter, everyone signed up, had first dibs on this product. And we're probably gonna be doing that on a lot of our future accessories and products. Possibly the shingle. So if you do want a shingle for your AC1, you should probably get signed up on the newsletter and get that notification. And then, I know people love to say I never got my email, check your spam, check your promotions, mark it as an important email, make a filter, do whatever you need to do when you get your subscriber notification thing so that it doesn't go to spam. Because I had so many people saying, I never got the email. And I said, check your spam, check your promotions folder in Gmail, whatever. And they said, oh yeah, there it was. So. Make sure it's squared away if you're really serious about, we don't spam newsletters, we're not sending newsletters like all the time, I don't wanna do that, uh, but we are prioritizing our newsletter list on new product drops in many cases, not all cases, many cases, uh, such as this one, and probably accessories for this and the AC1 and other stuff. So definitely sign up, and yeah, I think that's about it. Thanks so much for tuning in, guys. Take care, be safe, and I hope you can score one of these soon.